Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I said hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, welcome to a technically funny night. We have a great program for you. We're going to start off with our technically funny science talk show and then move into a technically funny comedy game called Hot Topics. And then we'll have some stand up sets by some of the city's best comedians. Welcome, one and all. There's plenty of seats here in the front, a uh, few in the middle. Make yourselves right at home. Just as a friendly reminder, this is, of course, recorded for our podcast and YouTube audience of millions across the world. Millions and millions of people listen in every week. And then for our listeners at home, hi, Mom. This is the sound of three and a half thousand rabid science and comedy fans. That's right. We're going to have a great show for you tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking to John Beltran, who will tell us about his life, a life lived in programming. It's going to be amazing. 20 years now, 20, over 20 years of programming experience. But first, let me introduce my co-host for the evening, the lovely and talented 2016 Funny Spicker, translator extraordinaire, Miss Hannah Becker. <laughs> Everybody. How are you doing tonight, Hannah? I'm I'm doing great. You're doing I'm just an great, amazing right? Amazing day. <laughs> Hannah perhaps might be. I'm I'm a good actress, if anything. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Hannah Do I had look a, like I'm having a great day, y'all. <laughs> she had a great show last night and perhaps celebrated too much. Maybe a little too much. Well, that's okay. We've it's got okay. even better jokes for you tonight. I'm a, I'm a professional. I can do it. Do you have any shows coming up that you want to plug? Um, no. Just, just this next week. Yeah. Um, Do you have any shows coming up? Well, this show next week, and then I'm performing at Stand Up Comedy Live next Wednesday, okay. Craft Bar, and then uh, the St. Patrick's Day Fiesta oh, yeah. at Belushi's. Should be really fun. Not as much fun as we're going to have tonight. Oh. You guys want to make fun of some science headlines? Yeah! All right, let's begin our first section. Comedy news and science. Comedy news and science. I think I'm gonna have to... <laughs> I swear this never happened to me before. <laughs> Everyone gets a little bit of performance anxiety. It's not Don't performance anxiety. It. All right, so this is the part of the show where we want to make fun of some terrible science headlines. And to begin with, we have uh, from the website, I fucking love science. Number one, animals know when they're being treated unfairly. Like when you bring them to a screening of Fifty Shades Darker. Which she has done before. Yep, bring my dog everywhere. Number two, babies have an innate sense of heroic justice. But no superpower is lame. Children are such a disappointment, aren't they, Matt? <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm, all, I'm disappointed in all the children I don't know that I have. <laughs> I'm sure they're lovely, though. They'd be disappointed to know you were their <laughs> father, so. We're friends, I promise. <laughs> That's the best thing about a science tro. It's all true. <laughs> all right, up next, uh, story number three. Men and women have the same size amygdala. But women wear it better. Mm -hmm. I think my amygdala is rather hip and trendy. <laughs> anyway, uh, our fourth story is how science can make your baby sleep better. By reading to them about quantum logic, Aww. a topic so boring that they'll just want to pass out immediately. Do we have any physicists in the audience tonight? <laughs> just one. Uh, here's another one. It's really boring, though. I apologize mm. for your life. <laughs> Number five. Breakthrough computer could survive extreme conditions on Venus. But why do we need that? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Breakthrough could survive extreme conditions on Venus's period. Right, right. Lame period joke. All right. That was yesterday, brother. 
patriarchy's back in the driver's seat. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, up next, we have falling in love in virtual reality could be a deeper experience than real life. I know this is true. Yeah, Matt, I think that's just called porn. <laughs> Damn it, Hannah, it's love and it's real, even if she isn't. <laughs> All right. And our last story for the night, last headline, crystals found in Siberian crater are unlike anything else found on Earth. Like a couple who agrees what to watch on Netflix. <laughs> All right. That was our comedy news and science. It was indeed. So with that, I'd like to bring up our guests for the evening. Those of you that are familiar with the Barcelona comedy scene probably know him best for the amazing open mic show he runs at 23 Guitars every other Sunday. His name? Alone. Alone not with a woman. <laughs> that he and Kadri Reese uh, run every other Sunday. Happy the poor happy introduction, it, it's their fault in the back. All right. With that, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause for our guest, Dr. John Beltran. Dr. <laughs> Dr. what? <laughs> My apologies. Um... So Jonathan, tell us about yourself. Jonathan? It's John, it's just, just John. Uh, well, I'm a programmer. I've been a programmer for a long time, and I think that's what we're going to be talking about right. tonight. I'm very happy that I'm probably the first guest to your science show that not only doesn't have a PhD, I don't even have a degree. <laughs> I dropped out of college, so... You're like, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't clap for that. But I, I could, have, I could only tell you when I was here. You know, like, or I would unqualify myself. All right, well, so you don't need a piece of paper to say that you're smart. Yeah. Unlike some of us. <laughs> Matt needed like five pieces of paper. <laughs> no, just ten long years to get one piece of paper. Oof, indeed. So how, you started programming in 1986. I started learning programming in 1986, exactly. I remember buying the first magazines to learn about it because there, there was no internet, so that was the way to learn about it. There were books I, were was, I wasn't and even far alive. Between. No, you weren't going to be alive for like another 10 years. My parents weren't even married. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I, it happens, it happens. So what was it like? How did you get into it? How did you know that you wanted to program? Well, I, we like the computers back then. Was this uh, were these eight bit machines, like very very simple ones, so where you could play very simple games. But they were they were very popular. Uh, trying to learn po programming was not popular back then. Like <laughs> like if uh, like I never knew whether, whether I was socially badly adapted, and then I became a programmer, or it was the other way around. <laughs> I could never tell. Probably a bit but, of both, yeah, I would say. They went together. And now you can be cool if you're a programmer, but that's now. And you I'm have too cool old, glasses you know, so it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. You don't look oh. it, though, John. No, he's got the hoodie. He's got the Converse. Yeah. You can work good. for I'm, I'm Apple trying. You see, I'm trying. You've seen me on the stage. I'm trying. <laughs> All right, so let's go through your career a little bit. Can you walk us? We have some, we have some slides. I think, first of all, this is the best title uh -huh. of a talk I've ever seen. <laughs> it's uh, a few images, and not all of them embarrassing. I'm excited for the embarrassing ones. Uh -huh. What are they going to, is it going to be like Young John? Yes, there is a yes. picture of <laughs> Young John. I'm so one. excited. <laughs> Thankfully, it's in very low resolution. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll zoom in. We'll, we'll get it. All right, so let's see what we have. Yeah, that, my God! Look at the my graphics. first game. I never finished it, and it was never published. Thankfully, that's when I learned that graphic <laughs> artist is, was not my career. <laughs> Unk Pow. The program, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Unk Pow. Yeah. How do you pronounce it that? It doesn't make sense. But come on, it was. I, I mean, is I was this a like kid in Basque then, or yeah? something? Yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> no, it, it must have meant something to me at some point. Um, <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> the details. All right, so this is not maybe This is the one kind of, of your... games, like the platform games, you could jump around, and all the graphics were repeated because there was no memory, so you had to repeat all the graphics. So, 
Hmm. When I was in school, it was uphill. Like when we went to school, it was uphill both ways. You know, that's the kind of old days. So who, who in our audience is old enough to remember games that looked like this? Just a few. All right. All now, right. They're, now, now they're called retro, and they're they're Don't fashionable again. You know. <laughs> Look, you liked video games before they were cool, and also before they were invented. So. <laughs> You're like the ultimate hipster, don't worry. All right, what do we have next? What is this? Oh, so ah. that was 3D back then. Oh. That, that, was, that was 3D because the things moved and they distorted with perspective. Was this so the thing that you won? There was, one, there was one a little demo I programmed in uh, assembly language because you could only program in assembly language or it didn't move at all. So you are, we were calculating the equations and stuff. So this wasn't very cool back then, but it was okay. <laughs> 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 but I started learning programming 3D and stuff, and it, it, was, it was hard to get the information. Like, uh, again, now you go online and there's information about everything. The problem is that there is too much. You know, back then, the problem is there was no information. It was really, really hard to learn. But when you say information, what do you, what do you mean exactly? Like, what made this a challenge at, at that time, and what like, makes it easy to do now? Uh, like, you want to draw something in 3D on the screen. It's like, how do you calculate the coordinates of the points? There are some formulas you can use, but where, where, like, where do you get the formulas? Who do you ask? There was nothing. There was no, there was there was no nothing. Google. No, there was no nothing. It was like there were a few books, but they were super expensive, and they were few and far between. So, like you, like you ordered the book at the library, and they ordered from another library. Like, Anna, do you know what a library was in is? In Spain as well, you know. It's like. <laughs> I do know what a library you is. You went through the... You read about like it. Like your in... iTunes library where you keep all your all music. Right. All right, let's move on. Youngin. Party. Yes. Another one, yeah. What is uh, it? Does this move? None of, none of these images are going to move tonight. Oh. I we... apologize. <laughs> no videos? I am not... No a... videos? I didn't... No. <gasps> Come on, okay. Yeah, my apologies. No, it's okay. Well, we, we posted some on our Facebook page. I think we posted the one that, that you won the award for. Uh, or that yes. won an award. Yeah. Not maybe you didn't win more, but it won more. Now, when old. you guys it leave here tonight, cool. I want you all to run home and go onto our Facebook page and watch John's video and then like it and it's share amazing. it. You should maybe like drop some acid before you, you yeah, watch it's it. A, it's, it's incredible. It's cool if you do it. It's not absolutely necessary. <laughs> no, it's, it's absolutely necessary. No, but back in, the, like, back in those days, we, like, we, I initially started using Fidonet. Not sure if anybody heard of this what was is a that? net a network. It's uh, a dating app for babies. <laughs> yeah, and it's, yeah, it's one way to look at it. <laughs> it was also Use like one way to communicate with people before there was the internet available for the general public. So you used a modem, and uh, it was not like it, as fast as it is now. But that way, I got to meet people who were interested in the same shit, which was like really difficult. And we gathered in parties, like demo parties. We, like we gathered in a place for three days or so. So it was, it was the way to to connect. Like nowadays, you go online and you have everything, but it, it wasn't like that. But what did, what would you do at these demo parties? We what would occurred? program. We would share code and stuff. We did, and uh, and then there were like competitions. Uh, Some raucous games of Dungeon and Dragon. Like I imagine. All, all the nerds together in one. Like Drinking. all the worst nerds. <laughs> Drinking there tab, was some drinking. Soda. Yeah, yeah. There was drinking <laughs> after the fact. There was even drunken coding, which is Ooh. like dangerous, but uh, <laughs> very dangerous. Uh, we went to. I remember going to. Well, there's a picture of that. I think going to uh. to Helsinki one year to like the biggest ones were in Finland for some reason. So we took Interrail and went there and uh, met all the weird other pimpled nerds of exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. So what's next? Or we uh, didn't even get to talk about that. Yeah, another. Invitation to a party. Wait, what was your wait? What was your name? Oh, what was I your had a nickname. Name? It was Yan. It was my nickname. But you had. You had oh, I was hoping that a, iguana a was your. Yeah, who's iguana. A, who's iguana? Iguana was the demo group I be, I belonged to. Uh, Is that like a my, programmer gang? So it was uh, iguana. <laughs> <laughs> there were uh, graphic artists, mother. musicians, and programmers. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't do, like these days, uh, computers can do a lot, but back then, if you wanted to do something cool moving fast on the screen, you had to program everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was challenging. So, and that was applied to video games afterwards. Were there like uh, initiation yes. rituals to get into a Team Iguana? <laughs> <laughs> Some things have to just, stay in the past, no, huh? Just, just 
If you told I, I remember the I remember the drinking. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just for a little bit of context, Team Iguana won a, an award in 1994 for a demo video, like a yeah. video graphics demo that you right, made. And that's the one that we posted. Yeah, and that's, that's so that's what's posted watch. to the Facebook page. You guys can take out your phone now, watch it, you know. It's <laughs> We'll wait. It's totally fine. All right, what do we have next then? Another, yeah, skip it. There's another one of those. Yeah. Any Mario Kart oh. fans? Wait, which one? Rainbow Road, like? exactly. All right, but here, here is the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You asked me, who, who am I, right? Like, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's John? That's yes, you? Uh, that's me, of course. It's 23. It is so blurry. Oh, it's, thankfully. It's eight bits, bitches. <laughs> yeah. In this picture, you can see Iguana members present. Assembly 94. You see the bunch of nerds there? <laughs> yeah. Nice polo shirts. <laughs> Love the high-waisted style, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know a man could have a fupa. <laughs> I'll explain it after the show. <laughs> I do not want my mother here. Have you, have you never worn glasses? Did you, uh, did you ever... I wore gra- glasses as a kid. I, I hardly see from the right eye. Mm. So I had to wear glasses as a kid, but I... But you wanted to be yeah. as cool as possible so under the I circumstances. So I don't see from my right so. eye. That's the, that's the result. <laughs> wow. All right. So we can move along then. What is this? This looks oh, like an actual a, video yeah, game. That's a game. That's a game. Uh, like with some of the people who were in that, we made a we uh, made a video game called Commandos. That's Commandos one. That was uh, the world famous was Commandos released in the 1998. Yeah. That's it was pretty popular. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was. Did popular. anyone here play it? Yeah. Yeah, like, a lot of people like, like these days is like people are too young, but otherwise, like people, all people knew it. It was very. It, I think it was the best-selling game in Europe that year, and the third best-selling in in the world. So, so what's it take to build a game like that? How many people were we involved? We spent a year and a half without leaving the office. <laughs> like it, it, it was We're hell. Just like it was cups hell. And it was like really bad. Uh, Why do programmers not realize they have basic human rights? Or <laughs> <laughs> like, I think there's a problem with with video games. It's like it's vocational. You want to do it, so uh, the industry works like that. There's an endless supply of people who want to work in video games. So it's like human rights, who needs them? It's like the next ones haven't heard about them. So uh, I remember one of the programmers in this game who was, uh, he, he held a very delicate balance throughout the development. He had about eight cups of coffee per day and smoked uh, three marijuana joints every day at the office. And he was always like, he was keeping a balance, you know? <laughs> <It's> like. <laughs> That's really and, impressive. Uh, he wrote really good code, but we were all really scared. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what came after the success of Commandos? You worked on more games, yeah? Ooh. That's oh. A, oh, that's a, oh, that was before the game. John that's a, literally wrote the I book. I wrote the book, yeah, yeah. It was published back then. Without a degree. 94 or, or Killer. so. Killer. They it let was, you it was write a book. pretty popular. They recommended it at universities to learn assembly language programming. So, did, did you ever autograph it for anybody? Oh, a lot of people. Really? <laughs> <laughs> a lot, of, like a lot of people that ca- I've, that I've worked with afterwards. Like, oh, I learned this thing with your book, and you autograph it for me. So, it happens. Nerds, it happens. nerds are real, man. I, I, I know it, it exists. It's a subculture. It happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what wow. happened to you? <laughs> It was it was pr- popular for years. They offered to do another edition, but uh, it wasn't a good idea. So, huh. like nobody programs in assembly language these days. Like, but why back then? Because now computers are so fast, you don't need to program in assembly language. Only very like some like drivers and stuff, but you can do a lot without that. And programming in assembly language is the worst ever. Like you don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on then. What the hell is that, this? Oh, that's an excerpt from the book, like so that you can see the beautifully flowing prose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what are we looking yeah. at? This is a, a description a, a of diagram some of the instructions. Matt, Matt it's in assembly. Spanish, okay? It's so. in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Could, I know I, you have trouble with that, that but <laughs> I should have written it in English, but my English was not that good back then, so. 
No, but so these are instructions? Yeah, those are assembly languages. Shift right, shift arithmetic. I remember all this shit. <laughs> shift arithmetic right. Yeah, yeah. Assembly, like computers today have the same instructions, just extended to work with more data, but uh, it's how many, the same. How many people in the audience tonight uh, have programmed or program for whatever reason? Wow. Oh, yeah, the good thing is that uh, yeah, it's becoming bigger and bigger. <laughs> That's really impressive. I, I tried it once, and I couldn't do it, because you write all this code, right? And then the, the compiler will just tell you, error. <laughs> and it's like having a terrible girlfriend. You know you fucked up, but you don't know what you did wrong. <laughs> so I, I don't have the patience. I can't get through it. Like, I can't do it. But now programming is much easier, or? Does this mean that, that good programmers are also good lovers? Because they're patient. <laughs> they're willing to go through. John, you want to take this one? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> At least the, the pent up, like from, from not talking to women. No, very no many. It's like the two skills are <laughs> really appreciative. They're lovers. very related. They're basically the same skill, actually. It's like in some way. So, okay, okay like you shift right and then you shift left. <laughs> and you, rotate. You left. keep shifting. Tab, tab, keep tab, shifting. tab, tab. Yeah, exactly. Were there, were there any women that you programmed with ever? Uh, a few. <laughs> Not many, but a few, yes. Mm -hmm. I think it, there are more nowadays. But in general, it's, it's, it's not being very, I don't know, in general, it's very male-oriented, male-dominated field. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, no, I'm not going to say anything. It's International Women's Week, so. Every week should be Women's Week. Let's move on. <laughs> so Is this more commandos? That's commandos two. That was the second. Like the first one, we made it, and it was, uh, it was not expected it would be successful at all. So and the second one, it was like there was a lot of uh, expectation because the first one had sold so well. So did you? Did it live up to expectations? It yeah, it sold well, but it was it was uh, like launch day they were. Uh, manufacturing a million copies first day mm -hmm. because back then games were manufactured was this for a PC I used, yes well we did PC PlayStation 2 and Xbox but uh, mostly PC and you sent in the code for them to make a million physical copies of the game mm -hmm. and uh, and there was so much pressure that this game came out with a lot of bugs it was like we were fake I remember it was September, September 7, uh, 2001, so a few, just a few days Oof. before the, the towers. And it's like, no, you have to send it now because, like, so it was full of bugs. Like, okay, there you go. <laughs> you, you make the copies, it's your problem. And uh, this was in the age before updates. It just uh, yeah, there were patches like we like you but it wasn't as common as now. Like, it took but if you have like an press. Xbox game with bugs in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Consoles, no consoles. Game came a, a year later. Ah, okay. Came out a, a year later because you really had to make it sure that it worked. <laughs> That's Sony and Microsoft, made, like console manufacturers, make sure it works. So, all right. Cool. Uh, I think we have a couple other shots of games, but we're we're running out of time. Oh, this is oh, this is my most popular thing. Seri what is? I, I'm, ser I'm serious. I'm serious. He knows I'm, it. I'm serious. I'm serious. He Do does we, it. Yeah, yeah. Who who else knows the VI? <laughs> We're getting in pretty deep yes! territory here. What? That's fantastic, that? though. Yeah. I love I love our audience. All right. So explain oh, this. So explain this to cool. um, VI. VI is a normal people. text editor. You know, like you, you all guys write text on your computers, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> or edit it, and uh, like usually, like you type in the keyboard and whatever you type it comes like you type a W and you see a W wherever the cursor is but there are other ways of editing VI is a 35 years old editor and uh, which is still very popular in some circles and uh, each key does something like if you want to write a W you don't type W you type I which means insert then you write the W and you escape to return to normal mode. But why? <laughs> but it's called normal mode. Why would so you each key, do that? 
but if you <laughs> press W, the cursor moves to the next word. So each key does something. So you have like a hundred different commands at a single keystroke and away. What benefit is there to this? So I was just thinking, takes, going back to the human rights the thing, you know there's an easier <laughs> way. It doesn't have to be like it's this. It's very hard to learn. It takes a long time. But once you learn it, you can write and edit code like incredibly faster mm. than you can with a cursor. You don't, need, you don't use the cursor keys at all. And uh, okay, so as a for for coding, exactly, it's very useful. Yeah. Okay, coders use it, but you can use it for writing an email as well. Like, you, you, you but <laughs> I'm, <laughs> some emails are very tricky to I just, write. Right? I just imagine <laughs> you. <laughs> We've all been there. Dear know? mom, like, <laughs> I still. I mean, I like. I love. You, I love you. I. But I like. This has been awesome. <laughs> you know, you might like. You might be able to use some help. Anyway, so, so I how prepared often a cheat do you do this? Huh? How often do you use this in your... All the time. Well, when you're not coding. All the, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not using it now. Well, but, yeah. You know, but... You don't have a, a keyboard. A keyboard, you know, you need <laughs> a keyboard. And text Wow, so you have this all memorized. So, you know this whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just the start. <laughs> it goes deeper. So... There are people who... Like, oh, some people prepare the versions in different... Like, someone... You created like this the graphic. One, is what I you're created saying. the no, the one in English. Yeah, well, and someone made it more understandable for some people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> there are translations in all languages and stuff. But this is like a graphic. I thought of doing it graphically, and it helps a lot learning. So, Do you have one for like emojis? Many, many people mm -hmm. have. Huh? For emojis. Yes. <laughs> I use old school emojis. You know, it's like the, <laughs> the colon parentheses. Yeah. And, yeah mm -hmm. you know, this shit. <laughs> Anyway, I did a, I made a tool that emulates this kind of editing for modern environments, and I've lived off of selling that for a long time. So, just for the nerd, the nerdiest among the nerds, so those are my clients, <laughs> and those are our audience. Uh, well, uh, some of them. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we have to go through a little bit quickly. And there's a there's this a there's a sign the VI gun sign. I just sign, wanted because you know? Jonathan flashed he, the he sign. He did it, yeah. So there's a guy like this editor has like, well, there are two, two big editors. There's a there's a war going on, and you guys don't know, right? <laughs> there's the yeah. VI people and the Emacs people. <laughs> are you Emacs? <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> So there's there are gang signs and stuff. So the VI gun sign is like this. Isn't that yeah. the like two no, in the pink, no, one in no, the No, no, no. That, that's that's. I, that's <laughs> this is the VI gang sign. For for Hannah though, that's the shocker. <laughs> yeah. That's something completely different. <laughs> I'm there, a big there, girl. What can yeah. I say? <laughs> so sorry, mom. We we won't get into that anyway. So VI people flash the sign sometimes, but it, yeah, it can be confusing. Because of yeah. the, you know, the, the similarities. I'm not. I'm not gonna explain it. I was but, like imagining uh, nerds walking around, people like, flashing, oh my god. Yeah. So you have to be very. You like, have to be like, very wide about it. Okay. Very wide on your V. So if I go to like Comic Con and I start doing this, will people like be my friend? Be very well. Not the Emacs people. <laughs> they will hate you. Well, that's oh. <laughs> but you're selecting What's their half. Gang sign? Uh, but they chose the wrong editor. You know. <laughs> that's <laughs> the, uh, that's are there any Emacs people here? No? They can go to hell. See, they're not even at the cool places. VI. <laughs> VI till we die. So, yeah, I did a, for one article. I, I drew this. You know, I always wanted to draw and I limit myself, but I cannot. Uh, I, Do you I have that tattooed this, on your lower back? I published this as the VI gang sign. And someone wrote to me and is like, oh, my friend is a painter, you know, and... Uh, they liked your sign. It's like, cool. There's, uh, they're painters of all kinds. And like, <laughs> they made a rendition on, it's oil on canvas. And it's like, <laughs> wow. And I told them like, yeah, after I published the sign, I learned about the shocker. Does your friend know about this shocker? It's like, no. So I, I told them, it's like, oh, I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> I just love the was, idea was, of a bunch of dorks running around. Doing that yeah, yeah, and yeah, having yeah, no yeah. idea of the sexual connotation this, behind yeah. it. Yeah, there is a politically correct version, which is like this. You know? Yeah. This guy is the CTO of uh, YouTube. He flashed that right after selling YouTube for one point something billion dollars to <laughs> Google. Yeah, I bitches! would flash, oh, like flash whatever. Rich, you know? like, flash whatever. I'm out. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. I so, think I think you should get that tattooed on your lower back, John. Actually, I have not. Be- wow. Well, <laughs> <now that> I, <laughs> I had another what? idea, and maybe that. No, I have a little present for the for the show. What? It's like a, a present. A little little present. Now that we're. Is it a shock? It's uh, you can do whatever with it. Like you 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 decide. It's. Uh, <gasps> uh, uh, <laughs> I, so cute. Matt and I are going to fight did, over that. <laughs> I had them made a few years back, and I had forgotten now that we were preparing. It's like, oh, I had T-shirts. So. This is amazing. Yeah. Do you have more of them? So. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry? Do you have more of them? Uh, let's see. <laughs> I want one. Matt's going to take it because he's a nerd. And it, Because it smells like John? Oh. <laughs> All right, John. Oh, that's I, another project I did afterwards. That, that, that was a big fuck up. Big fuck up. <laughs> big, big. Very um, expensive fuck up. What <laughs> happened? Why? Like in, uh, you start projects, companies, stuff, you do things, and some work and some don't. And, you know, and it happens. A There's a bottom line. <laughs> so that was the, but it should be there as well. So, and then I had to start doing something else. And that's when you turn to prostitution. Well, after uh, this, AKA I had stand-up to, comedy. I had to, <laughs> no, that was later. <laughs> Uh, I had to make a lot of money fast after this because the fuck up was pretty big. So I started looking for projects, and one of the uh, I think there's something there's there's nothing about that in the present. Oh yeah, there's something. So I I arrived at this project, which is a really really cool project called Adama, uh, funded by the U.S. intelligence uh, research uh, agency IARPA. Which is a metaphor uh, detector. Yeah, it's a metaphor detector. So in our in our advertising for John's talk tonight, no, that's later, that's <laughs> he said yeah. that he worked for the United States Department of Intelligence, yeah, Defense intelligence, Department, yeah. and um, most intelligence mostly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I right. did a little bit of work for defense, but very very little. I, this was bigger. And is this? And then we found out tonight that um, some of his emails were released by WikiLeaks. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> What, what? It was, it's funny. I, I'm on WikiLeaks. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> You've made it, John. You have arrived. An article called Why, Oh, Why Do Those Nutheads Use VI? <laughs> exactly. It's like someone in the CIA thought it was interesting to learn <laughs> <laughs> why using VI is a good idea. Just so. a picture of John throwing uh, up the gang sign, <laughs> <laughs> sending it around the office. <laughs> All right. Um, I know you have a, a few more slides, but we don't have um, okay. time. Yeah, games. Just other games, games are, that you've worked on. I'm guessing these I'm are better games. On, yeah. And I. That's I my life nowadays. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You had to um, write the word. And I'm starting lot, another startup cool. now, uh, Katoid, for analytics. With Hans. This guy, Hans Rosling, no, hopefully, but he passed away last month. Oh. Uh, he's uh, an, he was an amazing guy, uh, Swedish doctor medical doctor, but he, he invested a lot of effort in using analytics to communicate the, how societies in the world are progressing or like trying to, like it's often the media are not very objective at depicting things. So he has, sort of like I, I, I do encourage you to go and watch his TED talk uh, about the progression of uh, society. So yeah, we can post that on our, yeah. on our Facebook. Yeah, that's, that's really, that's After the show. really cool stuff. Excellent. All right. I want to take uh, questions from the audience before we play our game. Um, so I think we have, we have a question here. Yes, Kadri. Who, who is this person? Is this a trick question? Hello, John. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> no, actually, I have, a, I have a question because we have been mostly talking about your uh, past as a programmer. So how do you see the future for programmers? Because there is... Um, uh, a lot of now also about the AI taking away, like also the over the programming part. So like I've been reading about this uh, deep coder and, and it's like, you know, you can assemble, assemble like already like code from whatever it gets. And so what do you think about that? So going into tricky territory here. Wait, just uh, the question is like, what do you think about AI making its own programs? Is that... Or the future of programmers for programmers, right? Both uh, things. I w- yeah. Can you be replaced by a computer? 
Not me, but maybe you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure I can. (laughs) No way, you wouldn't be able to. No, program. I mean, programming as a career nowadays it's better than ever. Today, like today, there are so many jobs as a programmer that, like, it's it's definitely like that. It's uh, it's been growing like crazy and it keeps growing. My take is that it's going to grow a lot. There's a lot of stuff being done, but still there's a lot, like there's a long way to go before computers can do the stuff we do. Like there's a long, long way. Like they're, make, they're doing more and more every day, but like you call, uh, when you call a customer service at any company, do you prefer to get a person or a machine? Like when you get the machines, like fuck, there's like this is going to be impossible. With a person, there's hope, but with the machine, it's only hope. But there's hope with the machines. Like there's no way. Like th- still, there's a long way to go. So I think it's gonna, it's gonna get there. But I think it's still a safe choice to choose to be a, a programmer working, programming. So you guys are safe for now. Okay, and and a quick question is like. So, because you say that you started like programming like kind of 30 years ago, right? And so we are, some of us are like slightly 30 years old. So what do you think, uh, like when you, um, <laughs> when you meet the person Kadri, who, uh, <laughs> when you meet the person who starts programming like 30 years, like after you started, it's like how do you respond to them when they, I don't know, suggest you, uh, something uh, at your work or when you have to discuss uh, with them uh, about important stuff at work it's like when you realize that they started 30 years later than you like that's a big gap so like how do you actually respond to that (laughs) well maybe Jonathan can respond he works with me so I don't know I'm not thinking about that I'm thinking about whatever subject we're talking about so you don't ever give them war stories like if they're oh like, yeah I give them all the them war stories all the time but that's just for fun I, <laughs> I remember back in the days yeah. <laughs> had to carry the damn thing up a mountain the, the, punch like, cards but programming is still hard these days so it's not it's not like it, it yes, got it is. really like you tried it right and yeah it decided failed it miserably a good idea, so. I think it said, like, open parentheses or some <laughs> shit like that. It's 50 pairs of parentheses dot, in the dot code. Dot your I's and cross your T's. Yes. Yeah. You have to be precise. Any, any other? We have one more question uh, in the back there. Sorry, Kim. Uh, yeah, what, uh, what are your thoughts on, on making programming mandatory in, in school, or, or what, what's the ideal age to start learning, and, and should that become part of the core curriculum, like math and sciences? And, Great yeah, question. Hmm. Uh, I think there's, there's been a big push for that, like the last, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, I think there was a big campaign with Obama promoting uh, programming. It's good. I think programming these days still, like, programming is a relatively recent thing. Like, uh, it's, like, we've been, like, humanity has been programming for 50 years, and not, not, a lot of things are not well known yet. Like, a lot of the languages these days, uh, you have to learn a lot of convoluted stuff that makes no sense. It's just random, uh, accidental. Like, there's this big article about accidental versus fundamental complexity. Like, learning the random things is not very interesting, but it's the only way to go about programming. It's good to learn, like, the patterns of thought for programming. So, for example, Python is a good language for that because it removes a lot of the random difficulties and you can focus on the actual, like, thinking like a programmer, which is like thinking like like a machine. Like, you have to... Like you have to think what's happening, and it's a machine, so it's uh, so it's good, but it has to be done in ways that it's not just wasted in things that are not going to be relevant. Do you think it's good for children to start thinking like machines? It's uh, it's good for for anybody to like if you think about something, like think through everything that it that entails. You know, it's like. Uh, you learn to think logically because the computer does. It's 100% logic. It doesn't even know if it doesn't make sense anymore from what you thought. 
So thinking that has some, like some people make affirmations in these days, like affirmations that if you take them to the, to the final conclusions, they're absolutely dumb. And they like even top, top people in power. And they, like, they should have been taught about thinking about all the logical conclusions of the things they're saying. So yes, I think not like thinking up, not just the way, but sorry, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. All right. So with that, we have to we have to wrap up. But before we let you go, we like to make all of our guests play a little game that we call uh, "Fuck Mary Kill." And so I have found three of the hottest lady programmers <laughs> in all of history hmm. for you to select uh, between. So we have first Ada Lovelace who actually invented programming. As she I was the first programmer. Yeah, back in 1896 or something. She's a friend of Charles Babbage. Uh, yeah. Of course. Awesome. <laughs> and the daughter of Lord Byron. Really? Yeah. All right. So we're all <laughs> learning something tonight. Then you have uh, Miss Grace Hopper, who I believe... Invented COBOL. Yes. Oh, you know, you don't like it, huh? Oh, that's all right. We'll keep we'll keep her on the side. And then uh -huh. lastly, we have Roberta, Roberta Williams. Williams, the video game designer. Yeah. The Sierra Sierra games. You uh, anybody was familiar? And King's Advent Quest. She kind of kind of invented uh, adventure games, actually. Cool. Cool. I'm glad all you right. know so have who to, all these people. Are. Yeah. I. Well, and this actually works out well for International Women's Day too. I think, it, which was uh, yesterday, but. Yeah. Lady computer scientists. I like how Mary is the, the word one cannot spell. <laughs> that's, that's cool. It's so, a curse word in my uh, house. Kill is an easy one, like Grace Hopper. Like, Why? Uh, Why do you uh, not like her? She what? invented COBOL, and they say that as if it were an achievement. Like, it's like <laughs> COBOL is Shots the fired. most horrible <laughs> programming language ever. Like, millions or at least hundreds of thousands of programmers have suffered due to her. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, so all the banks okay. ran on COBOL. That's, that's one thing, but that was an easy one. Okay, so kill Grace Hopper. Uh, yeah, and the other two. Uh, her name is Lovelace. Lovelace. Yeah, mm. and, and I think Roberta Williams is alive, so I, I would fuck Roberta Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, posthumously <laughs> marry Ada Lovelace. <laughs> that, that would be nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's give a big applause for Thank John you. Beltran. I want to thank you all for coming tonight this, to the Technically Funny Talk Show. Um, please like us on Facebook. Share our posts. Uh, we're trying to reach out to all the community here in Barcelona, anybody that's science-minded or research-minded or just wants to learn and laugh at the same time. Uh, it makes a big difference when you share and like our posts. So. Please. Let's do it. Yes, thank you. All right. With that, I want to thank everybody that takes part in Technically Funny Science Talk Show. Vanessa Hutchinson, Marco Morante, Christopher Drifter, DJ Charms, Hannah Becker, and I'd like to thank myself. Matthew Martha. Stick Dr. around. Matthew We're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we'll come back with some comedy. Yes, thank you.